South Africa's battle to recover from the effects of what's known as Nanagate. That's according to Treasury's macroeconomics chief, Catherine McLeod. She was giving testimony at the state capture inquiry earlier on today. Our reporter, Erin Bates, of course, is watching uh, that uh, proceeding for us, and she joins us now live. Erin, good afternoon. Um, Nanagate caused disaster for the economy. And today, I think, uh, for the first time, we're hearing in very great detail the extent to which um, that impact was. Afternoon, Cathy. So much bonds, bond yields, as I must confess, I'm not. It's quite a lot to digest. But what Catherine McLeod, the chief uh, macroeconomics uh, leader at the National Treasury, said was that it's difficult to isolate individual events and determine what sort of sheer conflict about the broader context of what she called the state capture project and here's the kind of it's about the context in which um Minister Nene was dismissed as well um, because there were question marks about why he was dismissed given uh, the pressure on the fiscus um, from various projects that were being uh, pushed from the then presidency. Um, so if there were, um, and now that you've put a name to it, then it's a bit harder to, to, to say one way or the other. Um, but um, if somebody else, not Minister von Royen, was, was put in that um, position, um, if that individual were um, associated with the state capture project in any way, then I'd I think even if they were seen to be uh, a, a good investor, I think there would be question marks raised about it. After um, Nenegate, Minister Gordan was uh, reappointed as finance minister. And because of the continued pressure that Minister Gordan remained under, uh, which investors saw, um, there was still pressure on financial asset prices. So you can see again there with the Rand dollar exchange rate, there was, there was still uh, pressure um, because the state capture project, it had a very um, visible impact with Nenegate, um, but it was a risk that was building um, over time as the events that were described yesterday. And of course, that's the chief economist there in Treasury is speaking about the impact of Nenegate. Erin, uh, I want to bring something else in here. We've seen, even during that time, how investors were talking about the political instability as being one of the key factors um, for the economy being so volatile. According to McLeod's testimony, was she able to... Um, clarify the importance of the individual or the individuals that were appointed to that finance ministry and why it was also important who was at the top of that of that department. Excellent question, Cathy, and one, in fact, that uh, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo did, in a way, put to McLeod. I do think she did focus quite narrowly on the mandate that was given to Treasury's team by the Commission, and this when Dondo Mohajana, the uh, Director General of National Treasury, testified, and they asked, can you model the effect of Nenegate on the economy? And, in fact, what uh, Treasury's team has done is uh, model the effect with certain concessions or sort of assumptions, uh, the effect of Nenegate on national debt, on South Africa's ability to pay uh, maintenance on its debts and then also possibly actually uh, make a dent in repaying those debts itself, something we haven't been able to do because we have had a budget deficit for a significant period of time. And she did uh, speak to this question of different finance ministers. Important to note that on the two different models they used, they estimated um, a shock of between 26 and 33 billion rand. I mean, the numbers here are really hard to kind of get a grip on um, and she spoke about that 26 billion rand which is the starting point in the estimate uh, on the costs let's have a look we have the stock of debt rising by 26 billion rand um, compared to what we had projected in the 2015 MTBPS um, and then what we find is that um, our overall um, debt service costs would be 3 billion rand higher um, in 2016-17 relative to projections um, in the MTBPS of 2015. 
And then under scenario two, we have that the stock of debt would rise by 33 billion rand in 2016-17. Um, well, it would be higher. And then debt service costs would be about 5 billion rand higher as well. That is post the Nenegate. That is post Nenegate, yes. We have not run a budget surplus since the time of uh, Nenegate. Um, our revenues have underperformed um, and it's um, put pressure on our borrowing. So any increase in that government debt stock uh, remains. So I think it's important to bear in mind that, especially for um, an issuer, um, when we increase uh, risk perceptions of South Africa, it has real effects on the fiscus, which also means that it's money that we're not spending on, um, <clears throat> it's money that we're not spending on overall social uh, priorities. Uh, instead, we wind up spending more on debt service costs. And of course, Aaron, you get to have an early day, at least somewhat today, because uh, the rest of the, pre the day's proceedings have been adjourned. What are we expecting tomorrow? Yes, Cathy. So we heard last week that uh, ESCOM was on the agenda of the Zondo Commission for this week, and we didn't have an indication then on when the first witness would be called. All we knew is that as of Wednesday, ESCOM would be on the agenda. And so not, what we've now learned is that two members of the inquiry's legal team will really set the scene for us and provide the framework uh, on ESCOM with two days of uh, going through reports and really laying the land, as it were. And then on Friday, we will have our first ESCOM witness, who is as yet unnamed. All right, let's leave it there for now. Erin Bates is uh, watching the State Capture Commission of Inquiry for us, and uh, she brought, out this, brought us that update of what happened earlier on in the day.